Okay, well guys, it's 3.30, so I'm gonna go ahead and begin. And once again, I'm gonna go over the lab, so if you have it, if you were able to print it out, guys, you could do this right with me, like once again, like we're sitting at a big lab table, just working on this assignment. So I'm gonna start off with um, the second to the last page, where we have a question on here, and it's this first question right here, if you can see it, where it tells us uh, you will simulate the activity of equal R1. And hopefully by now, you guys know that equal R1 is a restriction enzyme, and you know that a restriction enzyme is like a pair of scissors. They cut DNA, but they don't cut DNA just wherever. They cut at very specific sites called restriction sites. That's where they're gonna cut. Now, notice it tells you on this one, it says that you will simulate the activity of EGOR1. It says scan along the DNA sequence of strip one. So this is strip one, the first one here. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that out. You guys could cut this along with me. I'll add my sound effects of scissors. And you should have your strip like this right here. And then notice what the instruction says. The instructions tell you to scan along the NH1 until you find the equal R1 restriction site. It says refer to the list above. It's actually on the previous page. But guys, hopefully you remember that the restriction site, I don't know if you guys can see it, remember it's G-A-A-T-T-C. And notice it's the same sequence on the other strand, but just going backwards, G-A-A-T-T-C. That's our restriction site. So we found it, I kind of just squared it in here. So that's the first thing you have to do. Then notice it says, make cuts through the sequence of bases by cutting just between the guanine and the adenine of the restriction site on both strands. But notice it says, do not cut all the way through um, the strip. So I'm gonna go ahead and make those cuts right now, just between the guanine and the adenine. Hopefully you guys are doing this at home. Okay, so notice I made my cuts. I didn't go all the way through. Let's see, you guys can see that. And now it says separate the hydrogen bonds. Notice these are hydrogen bonds right here, holding the bases together. Now we're gonna cut across those. We're gonna break those hydrogen bonds. And you should have two pieces that look like this. Okay, so notice they were like this, and now I've broken them. A restriction enzyme has cut. And notice it cut in a staggered way, kind of leaving something that is called, and notice it says there the first question, are they sticky or blunt? Are these cuts, are these little parts here, are they sticky ends or blunt end cuts? Can you, can you answer that question for me on the chat? Or how about you just unmute yourself and say, hey, it's this. Sticky. Yes, thank you, <laughs> sticky. These are sticky ends. And guys, these are the ones that are useful when it comes to doing gene cloning, recombinant DNA. So we've done this one, we've answered that question. So we've done question 2A, and once again, they are sticky. I wrote out equal R1 on both sides. So this there. Now I'm just gonna put these off to the side. I don't need them right now, so I'm just gonna put them off here towards the side. Now let's look at our next one. It says, repeat the procedure with strip two. So I'm gonna go back to my strip, uh, my strip two. I'm gonna go ahead and cut out my strip two. So once again, cut yours out. <laughs> And I'm sorry, I didn't catch your name. Uh, who joined with uh, the SDV operations group? Okay, so guys, you hopefully you have your strip that looks like this. And guys, notice this one, it says repeat uh, the procedure with step two this time stimulating the activity of small one. It says find a small one site and cut through the bases and cut the uh, cut sites indicated above. So notice here, 
if you look at the previous page in your handout, notice the, the actual restriction site for the SMA1 is CCCGGG. Notice it's the same between uh, this one, but backwards, CCCGGG. But notice, if you look at that previous handout, it doesn't cut in a staggered way. It actually cuts right between the C and the G. It cuts right in the middle between the cytine, cytosine and guanine. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut that. And you should get two pieces that look like this. And notice, guys, did this leave a sticky end? You can answer on the chat or just unmute. Is there any sticky no. end? Here? No. No, there is no sticky ends. These, this is a blunt end cut. So notice, are there any hydrogen bonds between the cut sites? No. Notice there's no hydrogen bonds. We cut it right down the middle. It says, are they new ends? Are the new ends sticky or blunt? These are blunt and cuts. So this is a blunt and cut. Guys, these are not really useful when it comes to genetic engineering, recombinant DNA. Uh, it's something good for the bacteria to help fight against viruses, but not really necessarily good for us to use in biotechnology. So I'm going to go ahead and put this one aside. Okay, so next we're going to move on to number four. It says, stimulate. Uh, assimilate the activity for HIN3 with step uh, strip 3. So I'm going to go ahead and get my strip 3. Go ahead and cut, well, out, we already... cut out my piece. Go ahead. Okay, so here's my HIN3. And notice the restriction site for HIN3, according to our previous handout, is the sequence AAGCTT. So notice here I have AAAGCTT. And notice it's the same sequence, just going backwards on the other strand. Now notice the cut is between the adenine, the two adenine. So I'm going to cut, but not all the way. You cut just halfway. Cut halfway on the other one. Then you're going to cut the hydrogen bonds between them. And you should have you should have sequences that look like this. So this is our HIN3. And guys, notice. Hey, what kind of ends do we have? Can you guys tell me what kind of ends these are? Sticky. Sticky, sticky exactly. These are sticky ends. So our answer there, uh, for the question before, are these uh, sticky or blunt? These are sticky ends. Now, label them HIN3. So notice I labeled one end HIN3, the other one HIN3 as well. I'm going to go ahead and put this aside. And now we have one more strip that we have to cut out. It says, repeat the procedure once more for strip four. So this is my strip four. I'm gonna go ahead and do the same thing. And we're gonna use equal R1 to cut this one again. So notice equal R1, we've already done this once, but now we're doing it to strip four as well. Notice here's my recognition sequence, G-A-A-T-T-C. And notice it's the same thing going backwards. We cut just between the guanine and the adenine. Then you cut the hydrogen bonds. And notice we have a cut very similar to our first strip. Uh, so once again, this is an equal R1. I labeled each part equal R1. So let's go ahead and put this off to the side. Okay, so we've cut all of our strips now. And notice the next question, it says, pick up the front end DNA fragment of strip four. So I'm gonna pick up my front end of strip four. This is my front end, it's an equal R1 cut. And now it says, uh, and the back end of a HIN3 fragment from strip three. So I'm gonna get my back end of strip three. So these are our two ends right here. So notice it says um, both fragments have single-stranded tails, so they both have sticky ends. Uh, and it says there to um, 
First, let's write down the base sequence of the two tails of equal one. So it only it doesn't want you to write this entire this this sequence right here. Write this sequence of T A A A. That's for equal one. And then for hint three, you're going to write A G C T. So you're just writing those sequences, those four letter sequences on those blanks for A. And then the next question, are these base sequences of HIN3 and E4-1, are they complementary? Guys, do they base pair with each other? Can you guys answer that to me on the chat or unmute yourself and tell me? No. No, they do not. So that is no. And explain why. Why do they not actually match with each other? Could you guys tell me why? Because the base pairs don't match up? They don't match up, but why don't they match up? Hopefully you see, well, notice, guys, did we use the same restriction enzyme or different ones on both of these pieces? We used different ones. Different we ones. used different ones. That's the key thing. That's why they do not match. We use two different restriction enzymes. Guys, if you use two different restriction enzymes, they find different restriction sites. They're going to leave different sticky ends. And that's why, once again, these don't match because I used equal R1 here and I used HIN3 on this other one, so they do not match, it will not work. Whenever you make recombinant DNA, you need to always use the same restriction enzyme on the plasmid, but also your gene of interest as well. So any questions so far about what we've done? Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and put these pieces back. Now let's look at the next question. It says, uh, number seven, it says, Put down your hint three fragment and pick up the back end of your strip one that we cut with equal R1. So I'm going to get my back end of equal R1, which I have right here. And now it says, um, put down the hint three and pick up the strip one. But we still actually have the front end of strip four. So uh, this is my strip four, and this is my strip one. And now it tells us, write down the base sequences. So notice you're gonna write down these little sequences right here, A, A, T, T. And then you're gonna write the sequence here, T, T, A, A, just this four letter sequence right here. And now it says, do, are they complementary? So notice when you put these together, do they base pair with each other? Can you guys tell me if they base pair or not? Yes. Yes, they do. Can you tell me why? Because they were cut with the same restriction enzyme. Perfect. Okay. Exactly. You used the same type of, notice this is eco R1. This was also used to cut, uh, eco R1 was also used to cut. So notice the sticky ends are going to be complementary with each other. It is a perfect match. It's going to work. And that's what we need to do in biotechnology. You always use the same restriction enzyme. And we would have done this. Guys, in our gene cloning lab, when we were going to combine the bacteria, um, uh, combine the DNA of E. coli bacteria with the DNA of this jellyfish that lives in the Pacific Ocean to make it glow in the dark, we would use the same restriction enzyme on the jellyfish, the same type of restriction enzyme on the bacteria so they could cut and leave sticky ends. Okay, so let me go ahead and put these pieces back. Okay, so now let's look at question number eight. Notice it says, imagine that you cut a complementary unknown DNA fragment with equal R1. Do you think that the single-stranded tails of these fragments would be complementary to the single-stranded tails of fragments strip one and strip four? So notice, strip one and strip four, we used equal R1 with. You have this unknown piece and you also cut it with equal R1. Are they gonna be able to base pair with each other? Can you guys tell me yes or no? Are you guys there? Thank you. <laughs> yes, you are. That the answer to that question is yes. Notice, and the reason is the same reason for the same uh, for the previous question, because you're using the same restriction enzyme. As long as you use the same restriction enzyme, it's going to work. It's going to leave sticky ends. They're going to be complementary to each other. So let's look at question number nine. It says, there is an enzyme called DNA ligase that reforms the bonds between the nucleotides. 
For DNA ligase to work though, two nucleotides must come close together in the proper orientation for a bond between the five prime side of one has to be next to the three prime side of the other. Do you think it is easier for DNA ligase to reconnect two fragments cut by equal R1 or one fragment cut by equal R1 and one cut by HIM3? In other words, is it easier for DNA ligase to combine those bases that are complementary with each other than those that are not? Hopefully you guys know this and hopefully you're putting that. It is definitely going to be easier for the fragments cut with the same restriction enzyme. DNA ligase is going to be able to bond, make that covalent bond, that phosphodiester bond uh, with um, fragments that are cut with the same one, the equal R1, equal R1, between the equal R1 and the HIN3. Once again, they won't hydrogen bond very well, which means they're not going to be very close to each other, which means they're not going to get that bond to each other. Okay, so that covers those questions. Are you guys good with that part? Is there any questions? You guys are very quiet. I don't know if you guys are, maybe you already had all this done and this is not the issue you had. Maybe it's the coming problem that I'm gonna talk about. Okay, so it looks like. I was wondering why, um, like I get that sticky ends are the ones used to make recombinant DNA, but I was wondering why they're used over blunt ends. Uh, well, the blunt ends, because they don't leave like a little sticky end, like since they don't leave something like this right here, nothing's going to be able to come in and kind of join. Like there's not another one that's going to be able to come in and join. A blunt end kind of leaves something like this. Nothing else, like as soon as this gets cut, there's no way it could join back up. There's no sticky ends. Like this is cut, that's it, they're done for. There's nothing that could paste it back because there's no little overhang for anything else to come in and kind of stick to to complementary base pair. So that's why blunt and, uh, blunt and cuts are not that useful for us at all. It's useful for bacteria because once again, bacteria have these restriction enzymes to protect themselves against viruses and they cut it straight up in the middle. Hopefully it renders it useless. But for our purposes, we want the sticky ends. Notice they leave a little overhang that allows us to, you know, paste something else on there to kind of be complementary to it. Hopefully that explanation was okay and you kind of got that. Thank you. Okay, well guys, let's get to the questions that maybe most of you were here for. And it is the one that deals with this picture right here. Now, first of all, this is a picture of a plasmid. Uh, a plasmid is this extra piece of DNA that we find in bacteria that has definitely become useful when it comes to doing um, recombinant DNA, genetic engineering. So let me actually share with you that handout and let's talk about it real quick. Okay, so here we have our plasmid. And guys, let's look at the first question. So actually, let's read the entire thing. It says, uh, figure one is a restriction map of a circular plasmid called uh, YIP5. It says, this plasmid contains 5,541 base pairs. So that's what this is right here. This right here is kind of like the first base pair, but it's also the last base pair. And once again, there's 5,541 base pairs. There's an equal R1 site at base pair one. So that's why, once again, it's our first and kind of last base pair. The locations of the other restriction sites are shown on the map. The numbers after the enzyme names tell you at which base pair the enzyme cleaves the DNA. If you digest YIP or Y151P5 with equal R1, you will get a linear piece of DNA that is 5,541 bases long. Knowing that information, it tells you, that first question tells you, uh, what would be the products of a digestion with the two enzymes, equal R1 and EG1? So what you're pretty much having to tell me for that first question, for question number 10, is how many fragments of DNA do you get and how big is each fragment? So guys, let's look at this. If we have a restriction enzyme that cuts right here, and another one that cuts right here, we're gonna get two fragments of this plasmid. We're gonna get one fragment that's this big, 
and we're going to get another fragment that's this big right here. Now, guys, this fragment right here should be pretty easy to calculate. If this is our first base pair, but it's also our last, and this is base pair 942, guys, how big is this piece right here? You guys should be able to tell me. Can you guys unmute yourselves and tell me how big this first piece is? 942. Exactly. That first piece is 942. So your answer would be one fragment is 942 bases. But we're not done yet. Guys, what would this other fragment be? How can we figure this other one out? Well, this is 942. This is also the last base pair of 5,541. So all you have to do is subtract 942 from 5,541 and you have how big this other fragment is. Can you guys tell me what that other fragment size is? see if I could see my chat. It's hard for me to see my chat and my little screen at the same time. Yes, those of you who put it on the chat, that other fragment is 4,599. So your answer for question number 10 is two fragments. One fragment is 942 bases. The second fragment is 4,599 bases long. So that's how you answer these questions. You have to tell me how many fragments and you have to tell me how big each fragment is going to be. Uh, does that make sense? Does that help you kind of maybe navigate the rest of these problems? Okay, I'm getting a, I'm getting a yes, a thumbs up. Well guys, let's, let's try to see, I wanna see if you could do one more. Do number, do number 11 and let's see if you guys, I don't wanna, I don't wanna, give you the answer. I want to see if you could figure out. We're sure the answer. I'll give you guys, let's see, I'll give you about a minute, a minute and a half. And then let's see if you have the same thing that I have. So go ahead and work out number uh, 11. For those of you, I'll share the screen again for those of you who maybe didn't print it out. Okay, can you guys, uh, those of you who are working it out, can you first of all tell me how many fragments do you get? Two. Yes, you get two fragments. And what, how big are these fragments? Someone already put it on the chat and that would be correct. So hopefully you got one fragment you figured out was 2,003 bases long. The second fragment, 3,300, uh, I'm sorry, 3,500. Oh, actually, I think yours is off, Taylor. I think, I don't know, did, did, what did you guys get? I got 358. Right? I got, yeah, I got 3,538. Oh. Yes, Maybe. that's what I got. So the second fragment should be 3,538. And you could always check yourself because all these numbers should add to the total amount that the plasma, how many bases the plasma is. So it should, they should always total uh, 5,541. So yes, yeah, so your two fragments should be 2,003 and 3,538 bases long. Okay, class, well, I, I'm gonna leave the, the last two for you guys. I don't wanna give you every single answer. 
Uh, but I want to see if you guys can figure out the rest too. But do, do you guys feel good? 